Hey, this is Russell Brunson. This is for anyone who's an author, a speaker, a coach, or consultant. You have a framework, you have something you teach, you're trying to figure out how to make more money without putting in more effort. If so, this video is for you. Right now I'm actually at the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I've had a chance to be here after hours, going through all the archives, the manuscripts, everything Napoleon Hill had, and I had like, an epiphany today and I want to share with you guys because this is something that he did over maybe an 80, 70, 80 year career, did it over and over and over again and when I saw this today, I was just like, I gotta share this because this is something any of you guys can do. Most of us have some framework we teach, right? In the books I've written, I have frameworks to teach people how to build funnels, how to write copy, how to tell stories, how to drive traffic, right? Have these frameworks and I'm always thinking like, I gotta create another framework and another framework, right? And that's exhausting, it's hard, right? But like in Napoleon Hill, what he did was very, very fascinating and he made, built a huge empire based on having one core framework. Uh, before I go too deep into the Napoleon Hill stuff, I have another friend, her name is Brooke Castillo. You may have seen Brooke, she's one of the biggest life coaches on the planet. She coaches life coaches and her entire empire, $100 million plus empire, was built off of one core framework, right? So there's people who are doing this today, but most of us are so like in this hamster wheel of content creation, we never actually get there. So this hack from Napoleon Hill I, I'm gonna show you guys today will change everything for you, okay? And I got some really cool examples to actually show this in actual practicality. So if you've ever studied Napoleon Hill, a lot of you guys know the book Think and Grow Rich. This book's amazing, but this is not what he did first, okay? He first met Andrew Carnegie, the richest man on the planet, and Carnegie told him, he said, look, you're gonna spend 20 years of your life creating the first ever philosophy on personal achievement. So Napoleon Hill left from that and spent 20 years interviewing the richest men in the world, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, um, like all the people back then who were the biggest titans of industry. He interviewed them all to find out how they were successful and then he interviewed even more people who were not successful to figure out what are the things successful people are doing and what unsuccessful people are not doing. And from there, he wrote the very first book set he had called The Law of Success. Uh, if you've ever seen for us a huge book set like this big, but I happen to be at the Napoleon Hill Foundation and I happen to find in a cupboard over here the original manuscript for Law of Success. Check it out. This thing is Huge, this is straight from Napoleon Hill's typewriter. This is something that I could sell on eBay right now for probably $2 million and it is the coolest thing I've ever seen. But if you open up The Law of Success, I'm gonna open up the title page. He spent 20 years interviewing all these people and from there he created his framework, right? His initial outline for what he teaches, right? And for him they were laws of success. And so the very first law is definite a purpose. Number two is confidence. Number three is initiative. Number four is imagination. Number five is action. Number six, enthusiasm, self-control, doing more than you're paid for, attractive personality, accurate thought, concentration, tolerance, failure, cooperation, the golden rule, 15. Those were his 15 laws that he put together, the law of success, and then this book, each section of this book is one law, right? So he has the law, and he has stories, he's got things he teaches, he's got all stuff like to teach you how to take this law and implement it into your life. This is the manuscript, if you see a copy, it's this huge book set, and that was the very first thing he ever published, right? That's not actually completely true. Prior to him publishing that, he actually published a magazine. I'll talk about that here in a minute. So if you look at Napoleon Hill, that's the framework he teaches, right? Just like you have a framework, that's his 15 laws that he has as his framework. Now over time, he ended up finding a couple of other uh, laws he added to there, which again, if you've studied Napoleon Hill, you know that like sometimes he had 17 laws of success, sometimes he had 16, and I'll talk about that and some of the evolution, but it all started with 15 core things in this framework that his entire philosophy was built on. Okay, so my first question for you is, your philosophy, I think you're teaching your people, do you have a framework, okay? Frameworks are what rules this entire planet, right? A framework is the outline for what you're teaching. You take the framework and from there you can write a huge book like this if you want it. Now from there, Napoleon Hill did a lot of things. After he launched Law of Success, a little while later, he launched a club called the 13 Club. And in here it says, and the 15 Laws of Success. And this was a monthly continuity program. People pay monthly every single month they pay for. And they get this newsletter where he's teaching one of the laws of success and going deep into it. This first issue right here is talking about the law of the mastermind, right? And so one of the laws, he talks about it. And each month they'd get a new newsletter like this in the mail. And this is the only copy I've actually seen of 13 Club. This is the original. I'm jealous I want it, but again, he took his framework and he turned it into a continuity program, a monthly, like a membership site, but through print newsletter, right? Which was amazing. A little while later, he wrote a book that's the one that everyone's heard of, which is Think and Grow Rich. Now what Think and Grow Rich is, he basically took the exact same framework he had laws of success, right? And this huge, like, the biggest book almost known to man, right? This huge framework right here, he's like, no one's reading this thing because it's so big. I'm sure people read it, but he's like, I wanna make a condensed version specifically for entrepreneurs, right? So he said, what do entrepreneurs want? They want to use success principles to get rich. And so he wrote this book called Think and Grow Rich. Now in Think and Grow Rich, he shrunk it down to 13. He took 13 of the principles from success from his original framework, he put it in here, and he rewrote this book focusing on people who want to actually think and grow rich, actually make money. So these are entrepreneurs, small business owners, people who want to make money, right? And that became this book. Now what's fascinating is people will spend more money for the exact same content packaged in a different way. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there, I'm gonna come back to it in a little bit. People will spend more money 
the exact same content or frameworks packaged a different way. So this was packaged differently, right? Packaged for entrepreneurs. Now after that, he's like, okay, I have this, I have a lot of success that's universal for everybody. This book ended up selling over hundred million copies in the next hundred years or whatever, which is crazy. But then he's like, how do I take these laws of success? How do I apply them towards employees of companies, right? An employee's not going to read this probably. So what would an employee want? Well, they want to learn how to raise their own salary. So we wrote a book called How to Raise Your Own Salary. And guess what this book is? It's 13 of these principles put in here same laws, same framework, but specifically teaching employees how to make more money inside of their jobs, how to raise their own salary. It's so crazy. And in here, you see it's the same frameworks, but he's teaching different stories. So there's stories inside the frameworks he teaches entrepreneurs, different ones that he teaches for employees. But it didn't end there, it kept going, right? In fact, one year after he wrote Think and Grow Rich, he wrote another book that didn't get published for a long, long time. You've probably heard of it before. It's actually my favorite Napoleon Hill book and it's called Outwitting the Devil. Now, Outwitting the Devil is fascinating because he took these exact same success principles, law of success, same framework, and instead he inserted it into a conversation with him and the devil. And they're going back and forth talking about stuff, but they're talking about the principles of success. And he asked the devil, like, how are you holding men back from being successful? And it was basically the opposite of law of success. I'm making people not have definite and a purpose. I'm making them become drifters. I'm having them not do this. I'm doing the opposite. So it's like taking the law of success and flipping them backwards. And that's what Outwitting the Devil was. What's crazy, because we're here, I got to show you this stuff. This is the actual manuscript of the book Outwitting the Devil. Once again, here in the archives. So this is from Napoleon Hill's typewriter. Come on now, that is so cool. But wait, there's more. After a lot of success, before he wrote Think and Grow It, he wrote a book called The Magic Ladder of Success. And guess what this, happened, this Magic Ladder of Success happens to be? I'll give you a hint. It's a very similar framework to the laws of success, just taught differently. Lesson number one, the mastermind. Oh, that's lesson number one in laws of success. Uh, lesson number two, definite chief aim. Oh, that's lesson number two in laws of success. Oh, number three, self-confidence. Uh, the habit of saving, Initial, like the same framework packaged in a different way. Now this one actually had 16 lessons. Oh no, he's got a habit of health here, 17. So we added a couple here. So this is magic ladder of success. Same frameworks, packaged differently shorter, more concise, faster to read, more interesting for a different type of person, right? Magic ladder success. Okay, here's another one. Think your way to wealth. How do you think your way to wealth? It's similar to Think and Grow Rich, right? He took the same frameworks, package it differently, think your way to wealth, same laws, different stories. Uh, think your rich action pack. Okay, this is taking the same laws, right? But now this is like a workbook to go with the actual framework. The master key to riches. Very interesting. If you read the master key to riches, guess what's inside of here? Same framework, different stories, different hook on the front of the book. How to sell your way through life. Okay, how do you think you sell your way through life? Well, you have to have these 17 principles, teaches you how to sell your way through life. Same framework, different hook, different stories, different audience. You guys getting this? You guys, it's making sense to you guys? But wait, there's more. Before he actually launched Law of Success, as he was studying these things and figuring out everything, he launched a magazine. And the first magazine he launched was called Hill's Golden Rule. And I found some copies here. I actually have a complete set of every single one of these, but this is what Hill's Golden Rule was. He launched a magazine. And as you know, one of the laws of success, the last one is the Golden Rule. And so this entire magazine is called Hill's Golden Rule. As he was learning these laws of success, he was publishing them all in the magazine. And he was telling stories about people around the world who are living these laws of success. And every single month, people would buy these magazines. Now again, this was another continuity program. It was 20 cents per month per copy. People signed up every month, they would get this magazine in the mail. And he ran this for a year and eight months. And then him and his business partner got a big fight and it shifted from Hill's Golden Rule magazine to the, he kicked Napoleon Hill out and then became Golden Rule magazine. And again, I have every issue of the Hill's Golden Rule. I've got a bunch of the Golden Rules. But then a year later, Napoleon Hill, before he finished Laws of Success, he's like, I'm gonna launch a new, a new magazine. So he launched a new magazine and the new one is called Napoleon Hill magazine. And if you look at Napoleon Hill magazine, first off, this is like the most beautiful magazines in the world. They have different colors and stuff, but this is Napoleon Hill magazine. And if you read inside of here, guess what you're gonna find? 15 steps of his framework taught through different articles every single month. One he's gonna talk about mastermind, one he's gonna talk about definite purpose, and he's just finding different stories, different things to teach the same framework, different stories, different hook, monthly continuity program, okay? Is this making sense? You guys getting this? Okay, but wait, there's even more. I can show you tons of these things. Again, people will spend more money for the same content or framework packages in a different way. I remember the very first time I was at a seminar, a speaker asked, who here's ever thinking Grow Rich? And the whole audience said for me, his hands went up. So I remember buying a copy of it. I bought it on eBay for $10. I was like, I'm gonna read this book because it changed my life. And I remember buying it, it showed up. I put it up next to my nightstand on my bed. I looked at it for like five or six months. I never read it, never read it. And I remember going to another event and everyone's like, who here's ever thinking Grow Rich? Everyone's hands go up except for mine. I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. I gotta remember to read it. Went back home, didn't read it, didn't read it. Go to my third event, someone goes, who's read Think and Grow Rich? Everyone's hand goes up and I remember writing on my paper, I drew a star on my pad of paper. I was like, buy an audio version of Think and Grow Rich. And so I went to eBay that night in my hotel room. I remember going and I found a CD version of Think and Grow Rich for $97. This is before there were audiobooks and Audible and stuff. I bought it, it shows up. And I remember putting it, the CDs in my car, listening to it. And eventually I read 
through audiobooks, Think and Grow Rich, right? Now, my question for you is, what's the difference between the audiobook, Think and Grow Rich, and the physical book, Think and Grow Rich? Well, one cost me $10, one cost me $100, 10 times as much money. Like, what's the difference? There is no difference. It literally, word for word, is the same as somebody reading the book. I spent more money for the same content packaged in a different way. So Napoleon Hill understood this. So he started packaging different ways. Like, he went and he like, oh, let's make the science personal achievement, going through the 17 laws of success. And he turned it into a tape set, right? He made a tape set of it and then eventually made CD sets of it. Another really cool thing is Napoleon Hill. This is in the 1940s during World War. He took the laws of success and he wrote a new version and he called the new version Mental Dynamite. Anyway, this is it. This is called Mental Dynamite. This is a whole book set that he wrote. They actually never launched. He finished writing this book set and they were starting to promote it. But because of the war, there was an ink and a paper shortage. So it never actually got launched. But if you look at the titles of the book, it's kind of fascinating. Like lesson number one, definite of purpose. Oh, that's law number one here. And that's also number one. Like it's the same framework packaged in a different way, right? New book title, Mental Dynamite, new hook, new angle, New stories, same framework. All right, then fast forward a little bit while later, Napoleon Hill met his business partner, W. Clement Stones, who was a billionaire, a really cool guy. W. Clement Stone came to him and told Napoleon Hill, I read Think and Grow Rich, it changed my life forever, it was so cool, and we should become business partners. They became business partners, and then W. Clement Stone was like, there's actually, you're missing one of the laws. There's a law called PMA, Positive Mental Attitude. And so they wrote a book together called Success Through Positive Mental Attitude, right? And this became the 17th law. And so uh, eventually every book you wrote at this had 17 laws and the 17th law was PMA, Positive Mental Attitude. And so this is kind of a cool way to look at that as well. Uh, this is uh, the master keys to success with Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone. And guess what this is? This is them teaching the 17 laws of success through VHS and cassette programs, right? Same content packaged in a different way. On top of that, Napoleon Hill went and he traveled the entire country teaching these laws of success, doing seminars, events, all sorts of stuff. He was doing radio shows, teaching the same thing. In fact, one second, let me grab this. This is manuscripts from a radio show where Napoleon Hill, guess what he taught? Uh, think and Grow Rich, right? Module number one, this is the first radio show talking about definiteness of purpose. Uh, this is number two, talking about the mastermind, like radio show teaching the same content packaged in a different way. I think I have one or two more to show you then I promise I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the point of this entire lesson. This is one of my favorites. So Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone, they partnered up together. Again, they had the book, they had all the other books, and they were selling a home study course. So they made a home study course called The Science of Success. Guess what lesson number one is? Lesson number one, definiteness of purpose. <laughs> Same thing, right? They had a home study course. They had a teacher's edition to teach us. They started franchising this, going around the world, franchising The Science of Success. Same content, packaged in a different way, different stories, right? And they went and taught people on top of it. So I want to show you guys this because I think so many of us are overthinking this. Like we're trying to do a million things, create framework after framework after framework. I started doing something very similar in my business. So I have a framework I teach called the Perfect Webinar. You may have heard of it before. People can go to perfectwebinarsecrets.com. You can buy the Perfect Webinar, just the PDF of the framework for like $7. It's the framework and you get some audio and some video of me teaching it, right? Then we have an upsell where there's a home study course for a couple hundred dollars where I teach the framework in a home study course version, right? And on top of that, we have a coaching program we charge $10,000 for that is a virtual coaching program where we teach people over six weeks exactly how to build out the perfect webinar. So I'm taking the exact same framework and I'm packaging it in a different way. There's a $7 version, there's a $300 version, and there's a $10,000 version. Same framework, packaged in a different way. So people spend more money with the same framework or content packaged in a different way. So I'm sharing this with you because you are a content creator, right? You've got books, courses, training, seminars, events, YouTube channel, whatever it is you're doing, you're creating all this sorts of stuff anyway. But you keep trying to think of new thing, the new thing, the new thing. I want you to take a page from Napoleon Hill's book, come back and say, look, What's the framework I teach? Create your outline, create your framework, the thing that you're gonna teach, the thing you have that changes people's lives, and that's all you need. And then from there, you can package it different ways. You can package it as a podcast. You can package it as an email newsletter. You can package it as a book. You can package it as a course. You can package it as a mastermind group. You can package it as a live event. You can package it as one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Package it as a YouTube channel. Like, package it as Instagram shorts. You can package it all sorts of different ways. And just understand that people spend more money with the same content packaged in different ways. One last example, and then I'm gonna let you go back to work focusing on taking your content and packaging in different ways. I think about the very first book I ever wrote, it's called Dotcom Secrets, right? And it was everything I'd spent a year of my life figuring out and learning about how to build funnels and how to drive traffic, all sorts of stuff, right? So I wrote this book, Dotcom Secrets. Now, prior to me writing that, I was on the road doing seminars, speaking month in and month out for five or six years, and I was burned out of doing that. So I was like, I'm gonna write the book so I can stop teaching this and I can just give people the book, right? So I wrote the book, and it's amazing. But right now, you can buy the book for basically, you know, shipping costs, like $10 shipping and handling, right? You can go to Amazon and buy it for 20 bucks, right? That was the book. And the book taught everything about funnels. But what was cool is that after that, then we created a home study course called The Funnel Hacking Secrets, which is the $1,000 home study course, which teaches people how to do everything from inside the book. Shortly after that, we launched a membership site called Funnel University, which was a membership site where every single month I would find two different funnels and I would funnel hack them. I'd go through and I'd record myself buying the product, showing behind the scenes what they were doing, how they're doing. That became a $97 a month continuity program. Then my business partner, Todd Dickerson, and I, we created software that would build funnels the frameworks we taught inside the dot-com secrets book and that was software that people could use to build actual funnels, 
right? Based on the frameworks I taught. After that, we launched a live event called Funnel Hacking Live. And Funnel Hacking Live, we had multiple speakers come in, each teaching the frameworks of my book. If you ever look at like the outline for Funnel Hacking Live, you'll notice that each of the speakers are talking about a different chapter from the dot-com secrets book. Like, that's it, there's the big secret, right? From that, then we have a coaching program called Two Combo Club X. We also have a coaching program called Prime Mover Coaching Program. And in those coaching programs, we teach people the principles from the dot-com secrets book. And after someone has success in the coaching program, they send them up to my inner circle. And inside the inner circle, we do mastermind groups based on the content from the dot-com secrets book. Same content, packaged a different way. You may think, why does someone spend $10 on a book, Russell, and $50,000 on a mastermind, it's the same thing. It's like, because it's packaged in a different way. You experience it different. When you're reading a book, when you're doing a home study course, when you're using software, when you're in a live event with a lot of people and engagement, when you're in a smaller coaching program virtually, when you're in a mastermind group networking with other people, like it's the same content packaged in a different way. So that's the lesson I want to share with you guys. I hope that you have value from this. When you start thinking about the frameworks and the content you already have, you're probably trying too hard to become more prolific and figure out more things, but do Napoleon Hill then. Figure out your frameworks, stick to them, and everything just doubles down and gets better and better and better. Teaching different audiences, different people, different segments of the market, same frameworks, packaged in a different way. I hope that helps you guys. Napoleon Hill is inspiring me again. It's late night here, after hours. We're learning from the man right here. Somebody who sold 100 million copies of his book, you know, written more stuff on his core frameworks than any other author of all time. Like so prolific because he loved his frameworks. He loved the law of success. He didn't want to change it. He just wanted to keep getting it, giving access to his frameworks to different people, different segments. It's pretty powerful. So, see you guys in the exact same thing. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, let me know down below the biggest aha you got. Hopefully, you had a couple of ahas from like uh, different ways to package your information. Hopefully, you had some ahas about different ways to charge more for your information because if you do that, it's going to change everything for you. So, let me know down in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next video.